Hi everybody, welcome back. Dr. Richard Dusenzo here, or as known to my patients, Dr. D. Now, today is a transitional discussion dealing with an issue that we've been talking about called stress. And by transitional video, I mean that this is definitely not all-encompassing, but I want to give you a flavor for and an idea as to how stress can impact your biological environment and how the map can help you to identify what the source of that stress is. Now, obviously, stress is a multifaceted discussion and actually begins in preconception, which is a topic that we're not going to get into today. It continues through the um, conception process, through the development of the uh, child, through the fetus, uh, the fetus in the uh, uterus, and uh, is affected by uh, three major things at this point. The environment, of course, any kind of genetic compromises, but more importantly, stress. So stress is a fundamental part of our environment from the moment that we're conceived up until the moment that we either identify the source of that stress and or feel the effects of that stress. And that's what I want to talk with you about today because obviously at this point you know there are three influences in terms of things that affect the biological environment, those being the structure, the biochemistry, and then the virtual realm of influence that includes psychological, emotional, spiritual issues, which is where the bulk of the stress resides within a system that we're going to talk about in a future video called developmental trauma. But today I want to give you an example of how stress can impact one of various systems in your body when you come to me, you write to me, you tell me that I've had a perfect life, I have an incredible mate, I have perfect children, I have a perfect life, I have the perfect diet, I do everything right, I exercise regularly, I don't understand why I have hypertension, why I've been diagnosed with diabetes, why I've been diagnosed with a thyroid problem, why I have been diagnosed with IBS or one of a variety of digestive issues, or why I'm gaining weight and I can't lose it. So today I want to isolate just one aspect of that dialogue and show you what the potential mechanisms are that are associated with the experience in particular dealing with weight loss and digestive disturbances. So stress basically is um, a point at which there is no longer an ability for you or your body to compensate for the impact that the stress is having on you. So you reach a tipping point. Once that tipping point is reached, it triggers a mechanism that we've talked about in a previous video called the amygdala, the hypothalamus, the pituitary, and the adrenal. Now once this mechanism has been activated, it has multiple ramifications that are beyond the scope of this particular video, but I want to give you a specific example of how this is related to digestive disturbances and weight gain or inability to lose weight. So now the AHPA axis has been tripped due to your interpretation, your perception, your labeling, your response to a perceived threat. Now the stress mechanism is in full bloom. Hormones are raging from multiple locations in the body, but most specifically in this case from the adrenal glands who play a major role in regulating the stress that you experience. So in regards to digestion and weight loss, what happens is the adrenals start secreting a series of hormones, the first of which is called glucocorticoid, and one of its major functions is to divert blood away from digestion. Now, obviously, without any kind of background at all, you'll recognize the fact that if blood's being diverted away from digestion, it's going to compromise digestion in a number of ways. 
that are the topic for another video because basically it disrupts the bacterial colonies in the small intestine that allow you to break down, digest, absorb, and utilize your nutrients. Now, one of the secondary effects of this um, is that you are now not going to have access to the nutrients that you need. And in response to that, the cortisol that's secreted behind the glucocorticoids is going to now start depositing basically glucose, triglycerides, fatty acids inside the cells, guess where? in the abdominal area, in the belly. And your ability to access these nutrients at that point is compromised because of the hormones in play. And subsequently, you can exercise, you can change your diet, you can take supplements, you can meditate, you can do yoga, you can do any variety of things, but inevitably, the belly fat is gonna stay. And so the second series of hormones is a message directly to the thyroid gland. And the thyroid gland, being the nice gland that it is, says, sure, I'll jump in and help you for a while, but I've got some things that I'm responsible for too, and guess what they are? One of them is a role in digestion, so there's a secondary complication to digestion. And number two is metabolism, thereby stalling and impairing your ability to access the nutrients required to access the stored nutrients required for producing energy to enhance your metabolism and lose the excess weight. Now, there are many more compromises created by the series of hormones secreted during this process that impair immunity, that impair your ability to create energy, that impair your ability to uh, function cognitively, and um, a number of other issues, particularly with the cardiovascular system and immunity and breathing. All of these things we can discuss at a future date, but if you'd like to know more information about this or any of the other elements involved in the stress response, please visit us at www.mymatrix.com and or send me an email at drd.matrix at gmail.com and we'll be happy to communicate directly with you. I'm Dr. Richard DeCenso. Thank you for watching.